Exactly. I get the sense from the lawsuit from you right now that you had a feeling like, here we go again. This wasn't the first time you felt discriminated against in the league. Is that yeah, true? yeah. I mean, I've. I mean, the ruling, the ruling rule is in, intended to, uh, you know, give minorities an opportunity to sit down in front of uh, ownership. But I think what it's turned into is um, an instance where guys are just checking the box, um, and that's been the case. I've been on some interviews in the past that um, where that's I've had that feeling. There's you know, always no way to, to to know for sure, but um, but you know, and I know I know I know I'm not alone. If you haven't been watching sports news lately. I'm pretty sure that many of us are aware of the Brian Flores situation or what's going on with the NFL. For those of you who are not familiar with the story, let me quickly break it down. Brian Flores was formerly the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. He coached the Miami Dolphins for the 2019, 2020, and 2021 seasons. His last two seasons, he pretty much had a winning record and almost had Miami on the cusp of making the playoffs both last year and this year. In 2021, Miami started out, I believe, one in seven. And um, as a result of them being one in seven, Brian Flores' job was on the line. But Miami managed to pull off eight straight victories, including a huge victory, a blowout victory against the New England Patriots who ended up getting into the playoffs, right? But after 2021 season ended for Miami, which they still had a winning record at nine and eight. Brian Flores was fired by Stephen Ross, who is the owner of the Miami Dolphins. Now, Brian Flores has came out and he has issued a lawsuit against the NFL, and he has cited three teams in particular: the Miami Dolphins, the New York Giants, and the Denver Broncos in his lawsuit. And he alleges racial discrimination as opposed to these teams supposedly following the guidelines of the Rooney Rule. Now, what is the Rooney Rule? The Rooney Rule was set in place nearly 20 years ago that all NFL teams are supposed to follow that gives them the right to interview at least one or two quote-unquote minority potential head coaches for that head coach and vacancy position. Now, currently, there is only one black head coach in the NFL, and he happens to be Mike Tomlin. I don't Pittsburgh. have time for that speculation. I mean, that's a joke to me. Um, I got one of the best jobs in, in all of professional sport. Why would I have any interest in coaching college football? Um, that'll be the last time today, but moving forward. Never say never, but never, okay? Anybody else got any questions about any college jobs? There's not a booster with a big enough blank check. Thank you. Anybody asking Sean Payton about that? You know, anybody asking Andy Reid about stuff like that? Mike Tomlin has been head coach of the Steelers for well over a decade now. He has never had a losing season with the Steelers, and he has at least one Super Bowl championship to his rest. In a league that is about 70% of his players, black there are no nfl owners who are black and there's only one black head coach in the league now going back to brian flores and his lawsuit when he was fired from the miami Dolphins, and i truly believe that he was fired unjustly after all the man had two back-to-back -back winning seasons he was putting his team in the step in the right direction despite the fact he has the personnel that is truly unsuitable to sustain that type of winning. In this lawsuit, Brian Flores alleges that the owner, Stephen Ross, offered him $100,000 per loss so that the Miami Dolphins could get a high draft pick in uh, the next year's draft. And allegedly, Brian Flores was offended by this offer, so the team started winning, and he got fired as a result of him disobeying the rules of the team. Now, he was supposed to get interviewed by the New York Giants, and he was scheduled to, to go to New York to conduct the interview. Now, he allegedly came across an email that was sent by Bill Belichick, who was the coach of the New England Patriots. Now, in this email or this text, Bill Belichick is alleged to be saying that 
he was congratulating Brian on getting the New York Giants job. Now, keep in mind, Brian Flores hadn't yet interviewed for the job. But instead, this was a different Brian that Bill Belichick was sending this um, congratulatory text to. I forget the other Brian's name, but it wasn't Brian Flores. It was another Brian who got the job before Brian Flores was even interviewed for the Brian Giants. Brian Flores job. filed a class action lawsuit against the NFL alleging discrimination against black head coaches and executives. The suit, filed in the Southern District of New York, claims the Giants interviewed Flores for their head coaching position, despite having already chosen Brian Dabble for the job. Flores maintains his interview was a sham in order to comply with the NFL's Rooney Rule, which compels teams to interview minority candidates for head coaching and GM jobs. Now for the Denver Broncos position, allegedly, the Denver Broncos set up an interview with Brian Flores. He goes out there to Denver. They had his interview in a hotel and allegedly um, the management that's led by John Elway, the legendary quarterback of the Broncos, um, they came to this meeting very drunk and they basically were just toying with him to interview him so they could follow the rules of the Rooney Rule. So basically, they're just interviewing him, interviewing not only just Brian Flores, but most other black coaches just for a PR. This is why I say we have to get rid of the Rooney Rule because the Rooney Rule, it is not doing anything to get qualified black coaches these head coaching positions in the league. They're only putting on the dog the pony show just so that they can get public pressure off of their asses. But you're hurting these black coaches who are well qualified. You got coaches such as Josh McDaniels when he was at Denver, he did a shit show job to where he had to go back to New England to uh, get his old job back as the offensive coordinator under Bill Belichick. And now, He's the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. You got these old white coaches who've been around for so long that they just go from team to team to team, yet they'll still maintain their positions. Look at Dallas Cowboys situation. They had Jason Garrett on their team for a decade. That man won what, one or two playoff games in a decade? They kept him, and who did they hire after they got finally got rid of him? Mike McCarthy. Now, granted, Mike McCarthy has way more success than um, Jason Garrett, but if you study his um, track record in Green Bay, he can never get over the hump, despite the fact he got one Super Bowl title. And now look at the situation at Dallas. He's been there two years. Dallas still ain't won the playoff game. But yet, these black coaches get overlooked. They don't get hired. And the Rooney Rule is only put in place just to make it seem as though we'll make the progress. Brian Flores' lawsuit serves as an opening eye to what guys like us, we've been new, not only about the NFL, but about America, period. The NFL itself is a microcosm of what America at large has always been. Just because this is the year 2022 doesn't mean that racism has ended in this country. Oh, no. Racism is here. It's always been here. It ain't going nowhere. Either you just got accepted for what it is, or you, or whatever you do to change it, you're gonna got you're gonna have to get the old guard out in order to bring new faces in. Seattle quarterback Colin Kaepernick took a knee as the national anthem was played in San Diego, and he wasn't alone. Message is that we have a lot of issues in this country that we need to deal with. We have a lot of people that are oppressed. Uh, we have a lot of people that aren't treated equally, aren't given equal opportunity. The NFL is a good old boy system. It's been ran that way since the 1920s. Remember, the NFL didn't allow black players to come into the league until 1950. And it just only recently over the past 10 years that the NFL started to fully accept black quarterbacks to run their offensive systems. Even though they would still prefer you to stand in the pocket, get hit, catch CTEs, and destroy your livelihood way faster than any regular person would. Remember, they they would rather want somebody like Patrick Mahomes who would stay in the pocket more than he run than someone like Lamar Jackson who, if he don't see nobody wide open, he taking off and running, he gonna get the first down or a touchdown. This is what the NFL is about. But at the same time, they don't wanna recognize or acknowledge that a black head coach can have just as much success as any white coach can. 
back in 2007 when the Bears played the Colts in, in the Super Bowl, you had two black hair coaches facing against each other for the first time ever in NFL history. That was Tony Dun Dungy of the Colts and Lovey Smith of the Bears. Of course, my Bears lost to the Colts, but it didn't matter. I still was happy that the brother, Tony Dungy, won the Super Bowl. Now, fast forward to years later, the last black head coach to win one was Mike Tom. This is a continuous problem, not only in the league, but in this country in general. Black head coaches are still getting overlooked. Black head coaches are still getting undervalued and unappreciated. And these white owners only care about the bottom line. Why? Because the vast majority of this country, which is middle white America, as long as black players and black coaches can entertain them, they don't give two dams about your humanity. And this is why the Rooney Rule has to go. If you got to put a rule in place that forces every single team to interview at least one or two black head coaches and they still don't get the job, what's the point of having the Rooney Rule in place? It serves no purpose. Only thing you're implying is you're putting a Band-Aid on the wound, but you're not allowing the wound to heal itself. Why? Because you don't care if the wound heals. Only thing you care about is ensuring that the bottom line stays in. I'm glad Brian Flores is putting this information out there. But let's not forget that a few years ago, Colin Kaepernick shed some light on how corrupt the NFL really is. And we shunned him simply because we didn't want to stop watching football. I don't watch football that much. Honestly, don't care for it. I can go on YouTube and watch the headline. I mean, the uh, highlights anyway. But at the end of the day, what are we going to do as black people? Are we going to continue to allow the same old system to continue to misuse us and look at us as beneath them? Or are we going to have the nuts to start our own league? Remember, these leagues wouldn't survive nor exist without our talent, without our expertise, without our brain. Or we just want to go along to get along and just have white society to just respect us and kiss ass up to them. It's up for us as black people to decide what we want to do. Take ownership of our own destiny or continue to want to initiate ourselves by integrating with a system that still don't give two dams about you, that will never care about you, and that will never allow you to have full power. Something to think about. Think wisely. But get rid of the Rooney Rule. It serves no purpose because it was never intended to serve the true purpose of giving black coaches, some of whom, such as Brian Flores, are more than capable of doing the job. I'm out. I just read what the owner of the Dolphins tried to um, offer Brian Flores 100K to tank the season. I'm going to tell y'all some crazy shit. The year that I got cut, and some athletes, I told athletes, Hey man, I feel like our season getting sabotaged. That's just how I feel. There's no way that we should be running the same exact plays. I remember going to Coach Garrett's office, asking, hey man, you know I look forward to the game plan. Why am I lining up in the same place each and every week? That shit over there in Miami, that owner, that's bullshit. Man, I, hey, I'm behind Flores, Brian Flores. Yes, sir. Call a motherfucking ass out.